Today, I'm going to talk about the 10 ways that the narcissist invalidates you. Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. Now, obviously, there are many more than these 10 ways that I'm going to list, and you can list others down below after you watch this video, but I'm going to list the 10 primary ones that most of the people that I've spoken to have expressed. Now I've chosen these 10 in this list because they're, they dominate the list, let's say that. And it's prob these are probably the ones that I most commonly hear from people, but there are many others. So to begin with, I'm going to start with the definition of emotional validation. And you know, um, attacking somebody emotionally is one of the most powerful horrible tools anyone could ever use against another human being because it you just can't to the normal healthy mind you cannot understand how someone could commit such an act such a such criminal and cruel act towards another human being but the narcissist uses these techniques but first the definition emotional validation is the process of learning about, understanding, and expressing acceptance of another person's emotional experience. So you hear those three key points is learning about, understanding, and acceptance. Learn, understand, accept. Those are three things that a narcissist has a problem with and you will hardly ever find them, at least not authentically, doing those three things towards your emotions, towards your feelings. And this list can apply to whether it's a parent or a sibling or a, an adult child or a friend or frenemy as I like to call it or a coworker or partner or spouse, somebody you're living with. The first one that I've listed here is they, he or she will minimize your feelings. So let's say you may come home and you just got a promotion at work and you are so excited and you can't wait to come home and tell the person in your life. And you expect this person to be elated with and for you. However, what they'll do is just kind of be like, well, it's about time you got that promotion, don't you think? Or, oh, that's no big deal. I got this in this amount of time. That really took you a long time to get that little itty bitty promotion. Or let's say you got a bonus, you know, and you come home and you're so excited because, you know, you got $500 bonus. That's fantastic. But your partner, friend, so on, you come home and the narcissist says, yeah, that's kind of petty. I guess you really weren't worth more than that. Or, yeah, you know, I, I get bonuses all the time, three, four times a year. I, I guess you should be happy with that little bit. Or let's say you lost some weight, right? And you're excited, whether it's 10 pounds or 50 pounds. Hey, you put the work in, you got it done. And the narcissist says, yeah, well, I think maybe you should celebrate after a few more pounds. And they minimize your excitement. They don't validate how you feel. They don't share in how you feel. They don't learn about you and how that, that makes you excited. And they don't accept what, what it is that amazes you or blesses you because they're too self-absorbed about themselves. And the bottom line behind all of these, this list is the narcissist is so riddled with jealousy, they cannot see you be happy. The second invalidation is they will discourage you. So let's say you go, you know what? I want to, I want to switch jobs. I want to go find a better job. You know, I think I'm worth more than what I'm getting here at this job. And they'll go, uh, you know what? There's a lot more people that are more qualified for the job you even have. So I wouldn't get my hopes up. 
or they might even use the word dumb. You're too dumb to get a better job. I think you just better stay happy where you're at. The third form of invalidation is they'll be judgmental towards you. So let's say you and the narcissist went out with a bunch of friends and the night was just magical and it was so much fun and everyone was conversing and laughing and having a good time and you guys come home and you're like, wow, wasn't that fun? That was such a great time. And the narcissist looks at you and goes, you know, I was really embarrassed. Why did you have to act so childish? And you're like taken aback, like what's going on here? And he'll, he or she will even go as far as say, didn't you see the way people looked at you? They were all disgusted at you. Or he or she might say, you know, it's really embarrassing taking you out anywhere. So you see the judgmental there, you see, see the judgment, and that's something that you will find narcissists do constantly. Every remark is a form of judgment towards you. The fourth way they'll invalidate you is with shame. So let's say you bought this amazing little red or black dress, right? And you try it on and you just feel so beautiful in it. And then you show the narcissist and he looks at you and goes, you know what, at your age, you're wearing a dress that short, what a joke, whoa. Or let's say you're at the beach and the female narcissist says to you, you know, can't you just suck your stomach in a little bit? People are looking at me and I feel so embarrassed being near you. Have you ever heard that one? Or let's say you wanna go volunteer at a, a center, a shelter, and the narcissist looks at you and says, looks you up and down is like, you know, you can't even take care of yourself. How in the world are you ever gonna take care of somebody else? Whoa, again. The fifth way that the narcissist will invalidate you is by distancing him or herself from you in the form of ghosting. That's right, they will just stay away from you for a few days to even a couple of weeks. So let's say your anniversary is coming up, right? Your, your wedding anniversary and you go, honey, uh, let's talk about how we're gonna celebrate our anniversary. And the narcissist looks at you and says, what, celebrate how miserable you've made me all these years? I'll have nothing to do with that. And then storms out and you don't see him or her for a few days. Or you may say, you know, we need to talk about our financial issues. I found money missing out of the bank. And the narcissist looks at you and says, oh, you mean your financial issues? Maybe you should get a second job and then we'll ghost you for a few days. And the reason they do this, this ghosting business, it's to punish you. It's to punish you for bringing anything of concern to you up to the narcissist. That's right. That's their way of shutting you up and they will disassociate themselves with you, make you feel like they've deserted you, abandoned you. You get all like, oh my goodness, will I ever see them again? And you know, maybe I shouldn't have brought it up or whatever the case. That's the reaction they wanna get out of you. And so it's a form of punishment for what you've brought up. The sixth way that the narcissist will invalidate you is by denying you. So let's say you go, you know, honey, we haven't gone on vacation in five years. Let's plan on doing something. And the narcissist looks at you and says, that's a great idea, babe. Uh, I'll go on my vacation and you go on your vacation. So they will actually go on a separate vacation from you while you're left there scratching your head thinking, wow, what kind of a relationship this is this? And it's not a relationship because a relationship, you're relating to each other, right? It's a situationship. And 
anyone who treats you at this point number six and I've got four more to go and you and I both know there's more than ten ways that the narcissist invalidates you you gotta you gotta understand you deserve better you net you have to see you're valuable that you are valuable you have worth you are worthy of better you deserve the kind of person that you are the empath the good person the Christian the seventh way that the narcissist will invalidate you is by completely ignoring you that's right they won't look at you they won't respond to you and you're like um, excuse me but could you please answer me could you please respond and it's like you're invisible they'll just completely ignore you the eighth way that the narcissist invalidates you is they will give you a non-verbal response and I call it the evil stare it's just the most evil stare just a dead stare that you could tell there's so much like hate and disdain in their eyes like they're piercing through you it, so an example would be like you know I really think that we're having a lot of issues we can't seem to work things out like two mature adults I really think that we need to go see a counselor the dead stare the the evil eye I call it you know I'm I'm all Italian um, uh, my parents uh, were from Napoli and um, so the thing is is that they used to have a little gold uh, charm with with this with this symbol like this <laughs> evil eye so I still remember my mother who was a narcissist she would stand right by the front window of the house and every day she'd watch for passerbyers the neighbors and then she'd be doing this and giving them the evil eye and I'd be like mom what are you doing what does that mean and she goes I'm just giving them the evil eye so I you understand when I say you they will give you that evil stare and then the ninth way that they'll invalidate you is that they'll gaslight you so let's say you made a fun evening out with your girlfriends and the narcissist uh, said to you oh yeah I'll watch the kids don't worry about it you have fun with your girlfriends and so on and then a couple of hours before he is still not home and you're going oh my gosh you know I have to get get going with my girlfriends and you're trying to call him and you finally get him on the phone and he says oh no I never agreed to tonight that I agreed to next Saturday night you're misremembering and meanwhile you know very well that you told him it was tonight or let's say you plan this very romantic wonderful dinner with your narcissistic woman and about an hour before you're already in all dressed and she's not even home to get dressed herself and you get a hold of her and you're like honey how come you're not here we we have a reservation for seven o'clock and she's like oh I never agreed to that I'm out shopping I told you there's these great sales that I have to I have to get all the, the things on my list and you're like slapping your hand on your forehead because you know you made those reservations and you solidified them and it was a really great restaurant took a long time to get those reservations and they just blow you off like that and it really it's it's a strategy it's not that she forgot literally genuinely authentically forgot the narcissist very rarely does anything authentically by you know oh I mistakenly misremembered or that kind of thing everything that they do to you is deliberate and it's meant to do one of three things because I explained to you that the narcissist is demonically driven no one in a healthy rightful mind would choose to do somebody evil and harm day after day in a continuous loop over and over again unless they were serving a higher power such as the devil and doing his bidding because it says in John chapter 10 verse 10 
the thief, the thief is the devil, comes not before to steal, kill, and destroy. That's right. And God's word further says, and I am come, that is speaking of Jesus Christ, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So the narcissist is constantly listening to those devilish voices to always get you off track, to always keep you guessing, confused. The 10th but not final way that a narcissist will invalidate you is by complete rejection. So let's say you decide, hey, you know what? I think I, I want to fulfill a dream of mine and I want to go to school and study to be a nurse and I've always wanted to help people in that way and the narcissist turns to you and says what you you're too sensitive to help people you're too unstable you forget too many things you're an airhead and will just out and out reject your goal, your vision for yourself. So as I said, the strategy behind these 10 forms of invalidation, and again, there's many more, is to keep you off balance. And I listed some words here that the, that the reason that the narcissist is doing this is to keep you dazed, keep you confused, get you unstable, get you to question yourself, get you to doubt yourself, make you feel defeated, make you feel worthless, make you fearful, make you feel undeserving, make you feel shameful, and make you feel like you're not good enough. And I'm sure you can think of other, other results of their treatment. And that's why they do this. All those things that I just listed to you, that's how the narcissist feels inside. They feel shame. They feel worthless. They feel like they're not enough. They feel defeated and they're deflecting all of that pain and shame onto you. However, with the end game to destroy you. They hate what you have on the inside. You have joy. You are blessed. You have peace. At least you had peace before the trial and tribulation of a narcissist, right? And so they can't, they whittle away at your boundaries. Uh, they try to tear you down and break you down. This is not somebody we want to be with. I hope that you're starting to see that, you know, you're getting an aha moment. This is your awakening. But now I'm going to share scripture with you because the awakening is not enough. That's right. To fully heal and recover and rebuild yourself, that takes God's word. And that's why, that's a purpose of this channel. Yes, to give you the MO about the narcissist, but more importantly on a higher level is to give you the greatness of God's word, to give you tools to rebuild yourself and to get you back on your path of truth and righteousness. And the first verse that I want to share with you is in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. And I'm going to share with you what God thinks of you and what God's plans are for you. His plans are to love you and care for you. His plans are to build you up and show you how worthy and worthwhile you are to him, how precious you are to him. So I'm leaving you with the word of God to help build you up. And it says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. That's right where the narcissist is trying to, to, to kill your, your hope, your vision, your dreams. God gives you visions of hope. God gives you a future. Trust in God, turn toward God, get the darkness out of your life. And the next verse is in Colossians chapter one, verse 22, and it says, but now God has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy, unblemished, and blameless in God's sight. God gave his only begotten son 
so that we can be redeemed back to God Almighty. So that is how precious and what God thinks of you. And he loves you many times beyond our own comprehension, but his love never leaves us. And the next verse I want to read to you is in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. And it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That's right. Your heart's desire is to do good works and to, to bask in God's love and to love God back and to fulfill your destiny you can't fulfill your destiny with the baggage of the narcissist and, and, and the, it's kind of like a ball and chain to your leg holding you back from your truth, from your true path. That's the whole goal too. Look, the devil wants worship. He tries to steal it from God Almighty any way he can. He wants you to, to, to be stuck in that go nowhere relationship with the narcissist while the narcissist slowly destroys you so that you can't focus on God and inner peace and your joy. And you can't focus on moving forward with good works and just walking in the steps of Jesus Christ and, and living out the promises of God's word. You're too entangled with that whole mess of the narcissist. And that's why I call it an entanglement. I don't call it a relationship. I call it an entanglement. You're entangled and you need to get all of that off of you. Get it away from you. Detach. Go no contact. And the final verse I want to share with you. Actually, it's two verses. And they're in Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. And it says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing's going to separate you from God's love. And I want to focus on the principalities or powers. Those principalities and powers that are being spoken of here are the devil spirits that try to separate you from God's love. But the love of God would never leaves you, but they want to, they want to at least separate you from your, your destiny, your purpose in life. They, the, the devil spirits try to thwart you so that you can't move forward with your life so that you don't enjoy inner peace so that you're constantly being, you're miserable with the narcissist and you're constantly trying to fix things. You're, you're trying to make things work and it's busy, empty work in the sense that it's never going to help the narcissist. And you need to understand that change must come from inside each one of us. Whenever you try to help the narcissist who has not enlisted your help, they have not asked you for the help. They may have acquiesced with the bobblehead. Oh, okay, okay. Anytime you try to help the narcissist without them wanting it, that's you trying to fix them. And we know that we cannot fix anyone. The only one you can work on is yourself. And the narcissist is not a willing subject. And that's why a relationship with a narcissist is futile. And not only is it futile, but it keeps you away from your purpose and your true destiny. And I want you to know how valuable you are to God Almighty and you're valuable to me too. And I love you and pray for you daily. So if you found this helpful, do hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, do hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video. And until next time, walk in peace and be blessed in your hearts.